So the next thing that happens is that they show up to uh, remove this catheter. And my husband's there. They don't even ask him to leave. That's no big deal. So he's down at the foot of the bed and he says to my husband, we you, you just kind of move up to the, move, move, up, move up around. So he goes up to like the head of the bed. And um, so he's just talking, and the nurse is just talking, make a small chit chat and um, about what they're gonna do for Easter and this and that and the other thing. And um, I see that he's got, you know, he kind of lifts back the blanket and I can see that his, you know, arms are giant. He's got these great big forearms that are like as big as my thighs. He's just a really big man. And so he's kind of starting to fiddle around with the, the, the catheter that's, you know, got, it got to be removed. So I kind of look away because I'm a little bit squeamish. I don't want to like look at anything. I look over at the, the women nurses that are standing there kind of watching. And, um, you know, she, kinda, she was kind of... She was gonna check in a few things and then just kind of waiting and watching. And um, I see their faces kind of change. And then I hear the nurse, the male nurse say, it's a bleed. And then he says to my husband, hold her down. So my husband pins me down at my shoulders to the, to the, the table. And I look down and I see that there is just a geyser of blood coming out of my femoral artery. And it's more blood than I've ever seen, ever. And, um, and I look up at my husband and I can tell he thinks I'm gonna die. And um, I hear something about the, uh, that I've had too much blood thinner, that the bed won't raise, that, um, uh, I don't know, just some, some different things like that. And he's pushing on my body. I hear just, I hear things cracking and snapping in my body and the pain is excruciating as he, this big, huge guy is pressing down on me, trying to stop this bleeding. And I'm like, why are they doing this to me? And then I lose, I, I lose, I kind of lose consciousness. Next thing I know, I'm up above my, up above watching, looking down on the whole thing. I see them es escorting my husband to the door. And I see out on the other side of the door, I can see like, the, I, I can look down on the whole, the hospital um, as though there's no roof on it. So I can see the hall, I can see the, my room, I can see the wall, the door, and then I can see outside the door that, that my parents and my grandparents and my father-in-law are there. And, um, and so, uh, and that they're escorting my, my husband out the door to be, to be with them. And then I see that there is a, a, uh, a resuscitation team, like a, the people with the crash cart coming in. And then that's all I see. Um, Next thing I know, I am basically whisked away. The tenor of everything completely changes. It is, there is no pain. There is, everything is perfect. I feel utterly calm. I have, I have no knowledge of the life I'm leaving, of who I was, you know, who I was in my body, in my, in my life, that I have children, any of that. I have no knowledge of any of that, but I, and I have absolute knowledge that I'm exactly where I belong, that I am coming home finally, that I'm about to be with the, my family, the family that's, you know, waiting for me with open arms, that, um, and I instantly understand everything like every unanswerable question about the universe that I've ever had all of a sudden I suddenly know it all I know everything everything makes perfect sense um, and and I absolutely know that I'm home everything there's a uh, I am I, I have the experience of the there is I'm going down a long white corridor like a, a, it is a white light there's this white corridor it's kind of pinkish white and above the, above that there's this like dark blue 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 black sky um with sort of angelic 
sort of beings up there and there's this harmonious music. It's music, but it's the most perfect music. It's like everything is perfect and you can you can experience everything with all of your senses. It's like um, the air was soft. The music was delicious. You know, the, um, the colors uh, had sounded glorious. You know what I mean? It was like everything was, I, I could experience everything with every, every sense. And it was amazing. And then going, I was, and I also, I felt like I wasn't, I had no experience of being greeted by any one that I knew. Of course, I had at this point, I didn't know hardly anyone that had died. Um, and my family, my family members, my grandparents were all still living. So I didn't, I didn't really have any family members that were, that had died that I knew. Um, and so, but I sensed that the people that I was going to be going to meet were, were definitely my family. I didn't, they, they weren't, they weren't family that I knew in my earthly life. It, it was my sense. Um, but I belonged there and they missed me and they were so happy to, that I was coming. They, that they, they, were, they, they were anticipating that I was coming. And um, uh, I didn't see myself. I, you know, I couldn't see myself. I had no real sense of who I was in terms of my name and identity in my life on earth. Um, and, and I was being, with, and what the, one thing is different about what I've heard from any other NDE experience was that the, the person or being or whatever that greeted me was giant, was really giant, like being me. And it was this fatherly sort of energy, definitely fatherly in my, in my, um, that was the way that it was to me. And he was carrying me and telling, informing me of where, of, of things. We were like, we were like having a conversation, but we weren't talking. It was just, we were communicating. And so this, this, this fatherly being who was so big and I was so small that I couldn't really make out a face or anything. I couldn't, um, to be able to make out features or anything like that. But I, I felt like the warmth to me that we were going down, going down this like long white court kind of corridor and, um, where there were like things, pictures of my life sort of, it seemed like all around. And, and I was getting the sense that, um, that, that I'd lived a good life and that, that, that he was pleased and that, um, pleased with the way that I'd lived. And, um, and, and it was sort of informing me about my life in a way because I, I, you know, I, I, this was like news to me because I didn't remember the life. And so we sort of, so we're on our way to meet this family that's waiting for me and um, all this glorious music and glorious sounds and everything all around. And, um, and he was telling me, you know, informing me about my life and that I had lived a good life and, um, and been loving. And, and the, 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 what I knew for sure, the biggest thing I knew for sure was just that love was everything. Love was absolutely everything. And, um, everything. And so, and, and that because I had, I had been loving, he was pleased with the way that I'd lived. And so anyway, but he was informing me about my life. And then we got to where I saw my kids, where he showed me my kids. And then the tone kind of changed. And, and he said that when the message that I got was, it's not, not that it's not your time, but that I get a choice, I have a choice to make because um, I didn't have to go back. It wasn't really my time, but I didn't have to go back because I'd been through a lot and because what I was going to face when I went back was gonna be very, very difficult. And so he wanted me to choose it. And I said, no, I'm not going back. It's too great here. I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't, you know, no, I want to stay. Then, then I got to see my kids and what would happen to them if I stayed. And I saw that they would grow up without unconditional love, that they would grow up surrounded. They would grow up with the, fa the family that we had surrounding us that didn't love us. And that 
know that they would be orphans and no one would know it and and that their life was that their world would not sustain the death of their mother and that they would it would um that they wouldn't that they that they would have to that their 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 inner their their inner selves their souls their compassionate spirits their that would have to go away to survive the life that they would have to live without me and I, I, I immediately just said I got to get back I, I couldn't I couldn't stand it I couldn't stand it I got to get back